Alhamdulillah <laughs> Allahumma sallim wa sallim wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi ajma'in Amma abad Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu We thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who out of his compassion and mercy has granted us today uh, Welcome you again to the second series In the series of the national series of lectures organized by the Young Muslim Association. Thank Allah for granting us this unique opportunity at this hour. I uh, will seek the blessings and the bounty of Allah, the noblest of mankind, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, members of his household, his companions, and the generality of the believers on Sabi Allah in Resident ever send the earth. Children of Al Jannah, once again, I welcome you to this unique opportunity. And then um, I want to start by saying that um, today it's um, a day for us to remember that um, you are unique, you are blessed by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and we need to thank Allah. So, can we jointly say this together, children of Al Jannah? If you are happy and you know, Say Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alhamdulillah. Why do you say Alhamdulillah? You are saying Alhamdulillah because Alhamdulillah is going to be the last statement we are going to say when Allah bless us to become an imam of Al Jannah. Since you are children of Al-Jannah, that is why you need to say Alhamdulillah. Can you say Alhamdulillah once again? Alhamdulillah. Can you say Alhamdulillah for your parents? Alhamdulillah for my parents. Can you say Alhamdulillah for your teachers? Alhamdulillah for my teachers. Can you say Alhamdulillah for your, for, for, for your mentors? Alhamdulillah for my mentors. Can you say Alhamdulillah for our tutors, our aunties and uncles in TYM? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. T Y M data guidance. So we we'll go straight to discuss this uh, R. and the topic of our discuss is insecurity in children. Insecurity in children. How do we know this? So during uh, this session, we're going to uh, look at the background to the topic. We are going to discuss uh, extensively what. Um, the background that forms this particular topic. We are going to look at the concept of insecurity in children. Um, again, we're going to look at as bad, what are the causes of insecurity in children? Um, and uh, after we look at the causes, what are the things that cause insecurity in children? We'll take an icebreaker, a short break for us to be able to uh, relax a bit. And after which we'll come back from that break, we will now do a look at the indicators. What are the symptoms uh, which uh, we call Mazar here? And uh, finally, we look at um, the way out of insecurity for the children. I will conclude with some quotable quotes, inshallah. Um, so the background for this particular discourse, uh, children, uh, is whenever I turn in circle, do you know why? Do you do you actually know why sometimes you find it very loving, very, 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 uh, you love to turn in circles, you appreciate why you turn in circle, you just have a, you, 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 fun to turn in circles. Do you know why? 
the, the rationale for this is because you want to you want to adjust your environment you want the change of what is happening around you you want to acclimatize we acclimatize to what is happening in your society you don't just want to have uh, uh, by nature children don't just did not just want to have one stream stream jacketed area you want to have fun you want to uh, uh, you want to play around with colors you want to see how beautiful the sky is you want to quickly know what you need to do uh, so that uh, you can easily cash on and to this extent this as this actually increase your level of your security with um, your environment. So the background for this lecture is I just try it, children, just try it for maybe 30 seconds or 20 seconds. Just try and turn in circles. When you turn in circles, you get refreshed, you get um, renewed, and you definitely cash fund. So to this extent, cashing fund make you refreshed and make you much more secure. So, so the, the question of um, insecurity in children, that's a big question, one big question. Whose responsibility is uh, the, secure, the issue of security in children? Uh, is it the father's responsibility? Is it the mother, which are your parents? Is it your responsibility yourself? Because we said insecurity in children. It is peculiar to you as a child. Are you the one that should get, get to secure yourself? Then is it society that you find yourself that should do this? who we'll answer this question if we can actually know the concept of security itself and what it entails. So what is security and what it entails? Let us quickly define security from the Quran al Karim. That's why I will give you an eye, the last testament, so that you can appreciate the definition of security. And that is, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believe in Allah, who believe on the day of Yom al Qiyamah, who believe in the angels, who believe in the books of Allah, who believes in the prophet of Allah, who believes on the Qadr of Allah, and who also believe that Allah believes in the Qadr of Allah. All these six articles of faith, their faith is firm in it. So that is why I refer to you as the children of Al Jannah. Because you believe in all the articles of faith. Allah says, Walam yalbasu imanam bizulmin. And your belief is not mixed, is not an adulterated one. Walam yalbisu imanahum bizulmin. You do not mix up your iman with what bizulmin, iniquities, with what bizulmin, with wrongdoings. We are not deliver today and something else tomorrow. Your belief is perfect. It's nearness to perfect. And I says, lahum amnu. They are those who have security. They are those who have what children? They have security. Can you see after I'm here, I do have what? Security. And I says, wahum utedu. And they are those who are guided. So security is a function of your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are discussing insecurity in children, children of Al Jannah should not be insecure because Allah has guided you. So respons whose responsibility is it? It is everybody's responsibility. Uh, last messenger from the statement of the noblest of mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, from the account of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. Uh, he said, I had Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, kullukum ra'i wa kullukum mas'ul arra'iyatihi. He said, everybody is a shepherd and everybody will be asked how he directs his flock. He now started making category the categorization of everybody involved. So when I was asking the question in the earlier slide, whose responsibility is it? I said, is it the father, the child, the mother, and the society? So in inference, it is everybody's responsibility. Let's go back to the Hadith again. The Hadith says it's uh, from said, uh, 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 
first and foremost al imam al ra'i huwa mas'ul an ra'iyat imam in the masjid imam in a community a leader an amir of an organization is a leader and will be asked about his what his subject wa rajulun and also a man the head of the house the father will be asked about his household how he directs their flock and why moratan and your mom also is also a leader fi baiti zawjiha in the house of his husband wa mas'ulati arrayhatiha and we will also be asked how she direct the flock of the home in entirety a servant who is also sado responsibility of taking care of the property of his who of his masters who also be asked how he also has directed it in a best form the prophet now concluded the game by emphasizing wa kullukum ra'i wa mas'ul an ra'iyatihi the hadith is fine in sahih bukhari and muslim so in essence it is the responsibility of the father the mother the society and you as a child you you have a responsibility to fulfill as far as the issue of security is concerned let's quickly define security what do we mean by security security is insecurity simply is a way of reacting to situations around you it's a way of reacting to situations around you and the situations that uh, that you are yourself uh, can lead you to hampering the physical issues it could also lead you to having issues with your psychomotor which are maybe your extracurricular activities can also have issues of social and emotional growth and also affect your development as a child so as a, as children of our gender insecurity can have effect on all these areas i've pointed up i've just counted now it can have effect on your physical uh, on your the person how you look can have effect on how you interact with people it can have effect on how you also socialize with people how you make friends how you deal with your co-friends your peers it can also have effect on your emotional growth how you, your thought is what what do you think about what are those things that you usually think about and it can also affect your development how you grow so insecurity simply is a factor of fear stress and feeling discomfort so if you have uh, uh, security majorly in children is expressed when there are issues with um, uh, the children developing fear for example some children find it very difficult to go out in the night they usually say no 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 dad I'm, 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 I'm not going out all the the phcn or the distribution company just um, there is power outage in their respective homes you see them said ah no 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 ah we are on the gen sir we are on the gen abu oh my they are taking the light please use it. so call these this factor of fear yeah, stress that uh, they are the situation when children also develop stress as a result of maybe workload and they're uh, feeling discomfort sometimes because of what they are doing. so all these so all these have explained now translates the the issue of insecurity in various forms we have spiritual insecurity when uh, the child does not actually understand the essence of his creation uh, the essence of the creation of a man is the what wama khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liya'budu when luqman uh, uh, hakim in quran al-karim in surah al-luqman was was actually explained to his child one of the first thing he told the child is ya bunayya oh my child la tushrik bi shay'a don't associate partner with allah inna shirika la zulmun azim a certain partner with allah is indeed a what a great um, sin in sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la zulmun azim it is indeed a great wrong doing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the forms that it takes is that when a child does not know who to appreciate allah and that's why we started our lecture to deal with appreciating allah allah says anishkuru lillahi wal walidayya ilayhi al masir 
You need to appreciate Allah. Then afterwards, you appreciate your parents as a child. So if you have, want to have a form of security uh, in, in your life as children of a Jannah, you need to be spiritually upright. After giving thanks to Allah, then you need to also obey the instruction of Allah. The first instruction to Allah, to you as a child, is that continue to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to parents that are listening to me. Allah also commanded you as a parent. You are listening to me as a parent, as a guardian or a tutor. Allah has also instructed you too as a form of security for the child. Is that it is the duty bound on you to also command your household, command your flock to pray because salah is a mark of spiritual upliftment. Again, you have another form that um, insecurity also disguises himself to children is relationship. They find it very difficult to uh, have a very good relationship with people in terms of um, getting close to them, making friends, in terms of relationship, in terms of high, how, how do I talk to him? How do I, how, should, should I be able, can I talk to auntie in class? How can I talk to my teacher? No, if my teacher, I can't So It's a problem that it's also, it also translates itself in issue of body image. Um, Insecurity can also be, can also form this form. You see children who feel insecure because of his stature, because he's actually small, or he's, uh, he's a bit thin, or he's fat, or he's uh, and those particular those who are a bit ploppy in their body image start seeing people referring to them as horrible, uh, being fat, and they call them biggies. So he start feeling insecure that. What's the meaning of this? So those who are thin, they start referring to them as, um, look at this one, is as thin as um, the fish called shower. So all these are forms of social insecurity. The other forms is also translated itself is, you also see that um, areas of socialization is also a form of insecurity. When um, a child cannot socialize very well as expected and you see these in classrooms. You see these in in organization. It's just it's just deliberately and because of the, the, the form of insecurity he is. Maybe uh, he has been bullied before, so he withdraws. He becomes an extreme introvert to himself uh, because uh, the parents used to chastise him at home a lot. They used to talk down on him. And they used to do a lot of comparison between him and other children. So it becomes, it be, withdraws socially. And um, you see such tides in, in that form. And finally, is in performance. You also see a lot of form of insecurity in a child in aspect of his performance in either in school or madaris. Some people are very outgoing in areas of their Quran recitation. Because of some form of insecurity, it does withdraw. That seeing that person lagging behind in all that he does. So it is important that we quickly look at uh, what are the causes, what are those things that cause insecurity uh, in children, and how do we quickly nip them in board? We'll get to that uh, quickly. Children, one of the things you know that can cause insecurity in you is when there is a death, the death of a pet of loved ones. When you see children, sometimes they love birds. Birds like um, um, an or cock or even flying birds, and um, maybe on the day of um, on the special day, the parents got took the bed from the cage and they slaughter it, and uh, they say Bismillah, Allah Hafiz, and they slaughter. I say, Ah, Abu, you kill that uh, that my bed. I've been giving him cock. I've been giving him giving him on all these days, so it can make the child to withdraw uh, when they have their pets being slaughtered or killed. Unknowingly, unknowingly, or they lose a loved one. Um, this is important for us to identify in our children as parents, but children too must also know that um, if they love someone, they tend to withdraw. And so that is the end of it. Um, and usually, parents usually tell our, our children that um, uh, where is grandpa? Grandpa has gone to, has traveled very far, he's not coming back home. So you need to let them know what has actually happened so that they can actually know 
God is not Again, one of the key areas of uh, that causes insecurity in children is experiences in institution. Um, institution where like homes, schools, or community, uh, they, they, they are areas where children quickly learn and they also unlearn. Uh, when you are in a mosque and there's somebody who usually beats you, go to the back, children. What are you doing in the front? Making noise in the, in the mosque. Go to the back. So children tend to withdraw. They tend to have some self of in insecurity. Even in school, if um, they tend to uh, beat a child always in the classroom or have a story of a child who got to a new school, was transferred from the school to a new school. And when they get there, they, uh, they had a test in the class for the whole of the class. If you imagine that the student actually, and in those days, the child, the way the marking scheme is done, the marking style is change your book with your colleague and they change their book. So after marking, the guy scored, the boy scored 10 over 10. The other lady beside him scored seven over 10. Because the lady that scored seven over 10 was a shining star in school, uh, in the class and in school. The lady said, ah, somebody just come to my school and scored 10 over 10 and I scored seven. So he marked the guy wrong for, and he now said, he now scored nine over 10 and changed his to seven over 10. So when they now changed their notes back and he saw it, he said, ah, yeah, I got it. And I said, shut up, you have to get more than me. And, and I saw it, it can cause um, a withdrawal or insecurity in children. So unstable routine, usually parents, um, sometimes routine for our children, wake up in the morning, after waking up, go and do ablution, ablution, go and pray salat to suwi. After suwi, go and bath, brush your teeth. After doing that, then go to the kitchen, take your food, eat. Then after eating, you do askar masurat and you go to school. It's a now they said, no, 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 go on, bath, go on, bath, no, no, no. So you know, when you alter routines for children, today we don't even know whether we are going to eat before we go for Subi today, because Abu is going out. So unstable routine for children affect them in the way they do bullying. That's physical and or emotional. When you bully people physically or emotionally, usually when, when children reach out, when children, we, we, you experience a lot of, chastisement and they shout at you at home from, from your parents and you know that um, they get emotional down and they feel insecure and physically too. When every time, whatever the child does, uh, you know this, um, uh, they're taking three schools of skin now. So it's important that um, you children should know that if somebody is bullying you in school or in your, on your street, it's quickly call attention of your daddy so that you don't feel insecure. Daddy is always beating me, he's always shouting at me so they can know that something is wrong. The other forms of abuse is uh, also can be domestic, can be sexual, and can be verbal. This is very key. If you're talking about insecurity too, uh, in some cases, uh, if parents, please, you are listening to me, let us take this very, very, very important. Issue of sexual abuse can make a child to withdraw. Uh, a small child who is living at home uh, can be abused by, by, by neighbors, can be abused by even, you have seen cases of people being abused by even close relatives who live with them. So we need to be wary of what we, we do. Maids, in most cases, um, also would leave our children to maids and uh, they abuse our children. I've seen cases where, um, a maid, uh, female maid, uh, abused a male child of about 10 years old. I started teaching him um, things that are not um, allowed in Sharia. So it's important that uh, all these forms of abuses will make your child to feel insecure and will affect them uh, in their life. Family situation, a change in family situation and can also make them, maybe suddenly Abu lost his job, um, child can feel insecure as a result that because Abu is always the one that provides everything for him or compares him every time you compare your child with um, Omar, your next door neighbor or Sakina or Aisha, your our friend is school. Can't you see Sakina? This causes insecurity also in children in school. So uh, in, in, in all ramifications. 
Other forms of insecurity are also uh, parenting of drugs and alcohol. When parents also engage in drugs and uh, or alcohol, it also affects um, children's development and it affects them in being secure. Because one day children just think that, ah, but but they say that smoking is not good. But this thing, let me try it now. Let me try this thing now. Ah, maybe it's good. This thing that they are drinking in this um, small leaflet line on. Let me try this smell a bit. The, the name they call it so. So all these, um, and once the children tried it and he got it, then it became a problem for him. So it's important. So uh, again, parental attachment. Um, parents paying too much attention to mobile devices. Do you, do you believe that why do children feel insecure spiritually? Sometimes parents will hear her dad, I had a son, uh, come to success, and they will be typing on their phones or some, uh, or some devices. They will be watching TV, watching the um, sporting, sporting events, and as such, the child will look at that. Daddy, they are calling at that. So all these are forms of areas where the children can develop um, um, uh, insecurity. The children start seeing that, okay, it's, it's like uh, this uh, phone is more important than me. Phone is more important than Allah. Then they become insecure in that respect. Other forms of causes of insecurity are living with the, the best parents. Um, when parents are always depressed, they're always be making a big sign. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, children will start looking at, uh, is this the way the life is? Um, so again, uh, children, you must also learn how to be able to not to make excessive comparison of your body, of your body, of your physique. Um, you don't start comparing your color of your eye, the shape of your nose, your tooth with that of your friend or your neighbor. No, you need it. Just accept the way. Allah has created you in the best form. Nakada Kalakunan in San of the Ah San of Takuin. Allah has created you in the best form. So don't compare yourself with other person. You are the best in the way Allah has created you. Then you need to be wary of children, parenting parents. You know, these are areas where you tell your child that don't do something. Um, and the children is the one that is also actually correcting you again after afterwards um, on this. So uh, these areas are very key. And um, finally, on the causes of insecurity in children are areas of crisis, situation, mayhem, war, which leads to areas of we have um, high DPs, um, those who are um, have, um, have issues, internet displaced person. It's important that uh, you now have refugees. When you are a refugee, you the sense of insecurity also will definitely, because you are no more in your own country, you have to emigrate from that person's country and it affects your psyche. Um, mayhem, if you are, just what we just experienced in Nigeria after the NSAS crisis, uh, that, that also culminates into um, uh, boggling and of people's the property companies. Just imagine that somebody's old office was boggled to the tune of maybe about 100 million naira. The, the effect will also have it. It's had effect on the children too. So all these affect the security of a child. But let's quickly take a break and uh, let's have an ice breaker before we continue. Children, can we just can we just watch this together?
So, uh, children, alhamdulillah, that's just a story of Bilal, the new, the breed of a new hero. I want you parents, if you are listening to me at this hour, please um, kindly tell your child the story of Bilal. Um, and if you have opportunity to have to download that movie, please let your child watch it. You see a transformation of Bilal from being a freeborn to slavery, and from slavery to Islam, and Islam emancipated him, and he became a shining star. On the top of Kiyama, Bilal is going to be Saad Ikon and Abasha. Bilal is going to be the leader of all Africans in Tanjana, children of Tanjana, Kebbirullah. So let's look at um, common signs to look at for. Uh, what are the indicators of um, insecurity in children? What are they uh, quickly because of our time? Uh, is emotional adjustment, um, instability, timidity, child start becoming timid. But they're like, come, ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Come so um, uh, excessive needs. Um, when you start, start, start asking excessively, uh, I want this, I want this, I want this. And the uh, disobedient, excessive, uh, excessive demands for affection and attention. Please don't go out, don't go out. I can't stay alone at home, I can't stay alone. So we start seeing that these are emotional adjustments and you know that they are issues of security. So insecure. So you need to now do a simple analogy. What is responsible for this emotional uh, uh, adjustment? Children, again, when you see amongst yourself or your brothers or yourself an outer personal hygiene, when you don't brush your teeth, you don't take your bath, when you don't, um, your shoe, you don't, you don't even tie the lace of your shoe very well, just let just go to school like that. And um, you are not kept, your socks is dirty, it's not washed, then you know that this is an aspect of insecurity. Uh, when we parents, I want to talk to us here, parents, is don't stop, stop your child from playing. Playing is part of their development. It affects their psychological development. When they play, there are some behaviors that in the way they run, there are things that it develops in them. So uh, when all this is being too much place, yes, you have to control their play. That it must not be, it must not be one that affects them. When you, when you control this aspect of their life too much, it affects them and makes them to be insecure. Again, when your child or when we as, as a child also notice that you're having altars, health, and sleep, you're not eating well, every time it's bread, 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 bread. You can eat bread for a long time, and sometimes it's outer sleep. Um, he doesn't sleep very well. They have nightmare a lot. Then they get easily upset. Um, a loss of appetite. Appetite during eating. Then we need to sit down and look at what is actually affect. Uh, what is actually the problem here? And then um, how do we nip it in the bud? Again, isolation. And you stay alone. I want to be just alone. I don't want to see anybody. And just lock your door and say, I don't want to see anybody today. Then we know that there is something wrong. Then when your routine becomes a bo very boring to you, such as praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing your askar, going to school, doing your assignment, uh, going for uh, extracurricular activities, then when it becomes very boring to you, some children may be very good at. Um, Quran, some be very good at um, Arabic, then becomes an issue when, then when you have erratic behavior or a change in pattern of what you do, that then we need to, that then poor performance of a child in school, then you have dyslexia, and uh, there are great people who are dyslexic in nature, and they are they're able to con conquer these uh, as, so uh, uh, it's not a problem. Where you are dyslexia, or you have it even bad uh, bipolar defective uh, uh, order. So all these um, uh, 
um, what we uh, we refer to as um, psychological um, effects or defects rather in children. All, all these may happen to child, but even stammering. Um, you know that I know of the camera who is also a sports commentator, a sport broadcaster. So it doesn't mean you can and uh, mixing words. Some child wants to speak and they say, um, um, uh, daddy, that, that, So it doesn't mean matter. All these are, it's a problem, but problems are causes right to success. Uh, excessive delay in speech, uh, when you also have excessive attachments to um, mobile devices, TV, and um, uh, particularly internal enabled devices um, every time that the cartoon, when you come back with cartoon every time, cartoon, so we need to look out for this. So quickly, what are the way out of this uh, insecurity issues? Number one is we run back to Allah, go back to Allah. Children, if you have any of these things I've just mentioned, you need to ask Allah for guidance for you. You need to pray to Allah. You need to do your salah. You need to do your supplication. Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was a stammerer. And you know what he said when he noticed that as it is his own uh, sight, uh, it's his own, um, his own aspect of life that is just a mistake. Not really a mistake, but just um, a, his own defects which he saw in his speech. He asked Allah, Oh Allah, you know, when you're suddenly am Oh Allah, expand my breast and make my affairs easy for me. Make my speech easy for people to comprehend. So that when I speak, they can comprehend, comprehend me. So, and give me my brother Harun as my assistant. So this defect, which makes Musa insecure, he quickly asked for Allah to guide, to guide him. And Allah guided him with it. So every time that uh, we have issue of insecurity in, in, you, in you as a child, of our, of our gender, or parents who are listening to me, if you find any symptoms of insecurity in your, in your child, please endeavor to ask Allah for guidance. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayyahdi will always guide you in this respect. Number two is, parents is the next point of call. Uh, parent preparedness is key to response to environment and self-expression and to provide readiness for their child. It's key that um, whatever your child is going on with today, um, you need to be very wary of them. You need to, when you, even fathers, when you go out and you come back in the evening, the children should be able to rally around you when you come back and be able to tell you, daddy, 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 that everything they have done, is the way and the manner you have become their friend, not just their father figure, you have become their friend. And you'll be able to see when they have issue of insecurity in them. This is very key for what you do. And um, we need to also be there for them as parents. Please, let us stop these parents. I want to talk to you. Let us stop this out of outsourcing parenting, outsourcing to your friends in your neighbor, outsourcing to who again, to your maid, and outsourcing to your teachers. Uh, teachers, I mean, you. Children will run in school from 6.30 in the morning to around 4 p.m. in the evening. Another teacher from 4 p.m. in the evening to about 8 p.m. And when the child comes, the only thing is coming home is to come, to come and sleep. And the routine goes like that. Even weekends, you are sourced to, to teachers. We need to actually do the act of parenting. I know parenting is not easy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this for you as a responsibility. And then the next one is we need the confidence boosting in your child. You need to encourage them, um, encourage them. And this is what um, all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. And uh, Nabi Elijah Ibrahim has done this for Ismail or his ark and uh, for future generations like of that nature. And you see all the prophets of Allah to build confidence in Allah. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
Look at Nabi, uh, look at what Allah tells us about the story of Maryam in Quran and Kareem. Father actually wanted a boy, but Allah gave them a girl which was named Maryam. But the, the Allah, they imbued confidence in Maryam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Maryam with al masih Isa, born of Maryam. So, impute confidence in your child. Again, we can see how a lot of trans transformation was done in the life of Usama ibn Zaid, the companion of the Prophet. Our Prophet imbued confidence in him. Usama, a very small child, had to lead the world where we have Kabir, Umina, Sahaba, Sahaba like Umar, Abu Bakr, and the likes like that. Abu Bakr said, I will not relieve him of being the general of this world because the Prophet appointed, appointed him. Look at that Prophet imbued confidence in Musa Bun Umeir, Muhaz Bun Jabal, Abdullah Bun Abbas, and all other companions like that. We need to also do this. And finally, if you have issues of insecurity in your child, please seek the help of a counselor or a psychologist. Talk to them and they can find you a way out. Finally, I want to conclude by saying that to children, I want to tell you that no matter what problem you are going through now, the solution for it lies with Allah. So turn towards Allah and will never let you down. Children, once again, no matter what the problem you are going through now, uh, the solution lies with Allah. Allah Akbar. So turn towards Allah and will never let you. And to parents, please, um, it's important that protecting children from violence, abuse, neglect, exploitation, and etc. Uh, uh, even security uh, is an obligation and not an option. Parents, please, protecting your children from violence, abuse, neglect, exploitation, but an obligation. It is why given on you. I pray Allah make this little one you have said to be a widget for us all and not against our children. Say bye-bye. Jazakumullah. Thank you for listening and I wish you a blessed day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.